Hello and welcome back to Firestorm Games and another episode of The Hobby Table, the video series in which we will be showing you how to quickly paint the miniatures from the new Squig Hoppers box set. During assembly I didn't fully build the miniature, instead I kept the rider and squig separate so that I could spray them with different primers. To hold the rider I drilled a small hole and superglued a length of wire into it. With this done I wanted to next prime and for this I've used some of Games Workshop spray paint. The rider is mostly black so I used the Chaos Black, whilst the large areas of red of the squig meant I decided to go for Mephiston Red. With the priming finished, we can begin our painting with some base coats, starting with some Mephiston Red. With all of your base coats, remember to keep your paints thinned with a little water and apply a couple of diluted coats to achieve a smoother coverage. Let's apply our first base coat of Mephiston Red to the small patch of squig skin in your rider's hand. Using some Abaddon Black and the same technique as before, apply a base coat over the squig's claws. For these next couple of steps, we'll be moving away from the base coats to apply some dry brushing. To dry brush, take a brush, dip it into your paint and remove most of the excess onto some paper or tissue. With only a little paint left in the bristles, you can now drag the brush over your miniature. Using some Mechanica Standard Grey, I'll be applying my brush over the black areas of the model. This will cause the lighter grey paint to only accumulate on the raised parts, helping to enhance those details. Following the same dry brushing technique as before, we will be next be applying Astaroth Red across the red areas. Alternatively, if you don't have this paint, feel free to use Evil Sun Scarlet instead. To give the bottom lip and underbelly of the squig a slightly pinkish tone, apply a light dry brush of Changeling Pink over these areas. Again, if you don't have this paint, Pink Horror makes for a good alternative. Returning to our base coats once again, we next want to start painting the goblin skin, and for this we'll be using Death Guard Green. In order to create the appearance of wood and leather, apply a base coat of Dryad Bark over any wooden parts of your miniature's weapons, as well as the Grot's boots. For any teeth, horns, cords and threads on your miniature, start off with a base coat of Rakar Flesh. For the metal areas of your squig hoppers, apply a base coat of Lead Belcher. Make sure you take great care at this step to not overspill onto other parts of the miniature. This is because metallic paints are particularly tricky to cover over. Also, once you finish this step, make sure you clean your brushes and change your paint water to avoid any cross-contamination of metal flakes into your other paints. With all of the base coats completed, we can now move on to the washes. The first of these is Caraberg Crimson, and this will be applied across the red areas of the miniature. This wash will flow into those recesses, helping to bring out the details. Remember, if you feel that the wash is a little too strong, you can always mix in a little bit of water, much like we did with the base coats. For the teeth, horns, cords and threads that we base coated with Rakar Flash, you can use a Seraphim Sepia to wash over them. This will not only flow into those recesses, but also darken down the colour slightly, giving us a darker overall appearance. For the areas that you painted using Dryad Bark and Lead Belcher, apply a wash of Agrax Earthshade. This will create the effect of rust on the armour. You can also apply some of this wash to the base of the teeth and horns to add in a little colour variation. The final wash to apply is to the Goblin Skin, and for this we'll be using Athonian Camo Shade. And here we have the finished miniature. You can see it has been fully assembled and based. For the base details, simply follow the same steps to the red, tan and black areas of this miniature. If you enjoyed this quick guide to getting your squig hoppers and boingrot bounders painted and onto the tabletop in as little time as possible, then please do let us know in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, do let us know as well. You can find the kit that this miniature came from, along with all the paints used in this video, on the Firestorm Games web store for at least 10% off the RRP, and you can find a link to the site in the description below. And so, we just want to finish off by saying a big thank you for watching this video, and we hope to see you again on Firestorm Games.